Hi, it's Eliana. Today I am going to be discussing a health infusion energy healing session slash DNA infusion session that I had done with a, a Sasani ETs for a client of mine. So when, what ended up happening is that the Sasani saw that the client needed to start with a health infusion healing session because they were working with beautiful healing energies of colors of purple, blue, and green. And 10 Sasani came in for, from the Positive Healing Collective. So today it was 10. And they always tell me how much of them can come in from which healing collective. And they decided to do a 20-stranded DNA infusion, the Sasani DNA infusion for the client after the energy healing. So they started off with the liver of the client. They saw that there were peppers in the liver bile ducts that hadn't been processed correctly. So the peppers were too chunky. And they recommended that the client cut the peppers in smaller pieces. And I asked the client if they ate something spicy because the Sasani told me they're eating something spicy. To them, the peppers felt spicy. The client said, no, it's not spicy, but it is peppers. So the Sasani had a bit of a discussion with him about cutting the peppers in smaller pieces so they could be more easily processed in the liver's bile ducts. The other thing that they noticed was that the kidneys had some gluten that got left over and a bit of toxicity. And they asked the client if they had eaten any gluten noodles. The client said yes. So they did a toxicity cleanse removal from the kidneys, working on removing the gluten particulates from the kidneys. As well, they wanted to do some healing on the client's close relative because there were some toxins in the lungs. The Vasasani noticed that there was some excess alcohol smoking in um, the client's relative's lungs and chest cavity as well as toxins in the intestines, liver, kidney, and digestive tract. So they did a lot of cleanse detoxing because they felt that would be for the highest good of the client's relative. And the client's relative, their higher self, gave permission for the healing. So it was interesting to connect on a soul level with the client's relative. And I don't need to see the relative in person. I don't need to know too much about them. All I asked was for the name, and that's it. And even before knowing the name, the connection was made. I asked the client permission to heal their relative as well. And that was given to So I had two permissions from the client's relative's higher self and from the client themselves. And I also told the client some personal interrelationship stuff that was going on between them and their relative, and the client confirmed that. I can't go into specifics what it was, but the Elsasani noticed that there were emotional things going on with the client and the relative and that it needed to be discussed and healed as well. So we, we did that. And we also went into the deeper soul things between the client and the relative of why things were the way they were and what was going on. So that was interesting how the Sasani converted a DNA infusion session into a health infusion healing session. And to me, that's energy healing. And since there was 10 Sasani that came in, they could see beyond the microscopic level. They could zoom in through my eyes 
to see what was inside the organs of the client, what food had been eaten. So yeah, it was, it was quite interesting to see the type of food that was being digested by the client and what can be done to help the body function better. Um, so through the eyes of the Asasani, they can go on a deeper healing level than I can or could because I am one person and I have one set of eyes. There was 10 of them that came in, so they have 10 pairs of eyes and they were doing multitasking in the healing session. They were going to the liver, to the kidneys for the client and it only took like 15 minutes for the healing of two things when there were, were 10 of the Sasani there. So they were multitasking on the healing. And then they were multitasking on, on the healing of the relative, on the relative of the client as well. They were healing the lungs, the chest cavity, the liver, the kidneys, the digestive tract, the upper and lower intestines. They were removing toxicity. So the overall healing session with the health infusion, that was about 40, 45 minutes. And then we went on to do the DNA infusion, 20 stranded DNA infusion. And it goes from one stranded to 24 stranded DNA that the infusions go from. And that's just a scale. It's never a one stranded DNA infusion. It's just on a scale of one to 24 stranded DNA. Usually it's like 15 stranded, 20 stranded, 10 stranded DNA infusions, whatever is healthiest for the client to receive at the time. And then after the DNA infusion, I had answered some psychic questions that the client had. And I've noticed as well that my psychic readings have changed quite a bit. I, I connect to a client's soul level frequency, to their inner soul, who they are on a soul frequency, not just the peripheral things that are around the client in their auric field. I connect deep to the soul level here, what's in the heart, beyond the heart, the higher oversoul of a person. I connect to that now to do psychic readings. It's on a deeper level, I've noticed, and I can pick up interesting things about clients, what's going on in their life, what's happening to them, what the soul path is of where they're going, where they've been, where they need to go. So soul path connections, without even the client telling me what's going on, because I just look at a deeper level from the soul perspective and the higher self of the client. Same with the energy healings, the health infusion energy healings with the, with the ETs, because they can really go on a deeper level, see beyond the human eyes. They see everything on such a deeper level, all the way to what a client ate and how it's affecting their body and what needs to be healed on a multiple scale level because they have 10 pairs of eyes instead of just one pair of eyes. And there's 10 of them doing the energy healing, not one of me. I can, I can do healing one at a time of something that I'm working on, like organs. Like if I'm working on the liver, I focus on healing the liver, one thing at a time. But when ETs come in, they're doing healing on a multi-scale perspective. They're healing, they might be healing more than one thing at a time. That's what I've noticed when I work with positive extraterrestrials for healing. And the Esasani, sometimes they're hybrids of Yael and humanoid ETs. So they're very pleasant, they're very positive beings. And I only work with very um, positive collectives of healing beings extraterrestrials. I work with the Lyrans. They're great healers. They're Arcturians, very great healers. And now the Sasani. And I've done DNA infusions with different kinds of 
extraterrestrials. But the most popular ones seem to be the Arcturians, the Lyrans, and the Asasani, and the Yael as well. And sometimes the ETs that choose to come in for the energy healing as well, it's outside those healing collectives. It could be other ETs that the person is connected to on a soul level, on a galactic family level, or just their spirit guides or galactic ETs, extraterrestrials. So it's quite wonderful to see the evolution of my healing abilities, working with positive extraterrestrials, and the evolution of the psychic readings as well, because that's changing. I choose to connect on a more soul-based level with folks and not just on the peripheral work field or what the client tells me from, asks me from questions. I connect on the soul level, what their higher soul essence is. So that's how everything has changed. I work on pure frequency with pure energy. When I do psychic readings, when I do healings, when I do other types of sessions, I work from the soul level, from the energetics. It's always positive, it's always beautiful, it's always healing. And clients get confirmations of things that they were thinking about wanting to explore or do. They get advice on life things, where to go, what to work on, how to do things. That's what's part of the psychic and the soul readings or the galactic soul readings, the Akashic records readings. I really tap into a lot of different things and modalities that I do. And I don't do tarot card readings. I just, I don't do tarot. I do it in private for myself and sometimes for friends, but I choose to do my psychic readings from an energetic soul perspective and not splitting my ability because I do pure energy psychic readings from the energetics of what's coming from the client's soul. If I was doing a tarot card reading, I would need to focus on the symbolism and the images of the tarot cards to explain to the client what the meaning is and what's, what's happening in their life. Because the tarot is a reflection of a connection to the client and what's happening in their life. But I would need to also tap into the soul of the client and check in energetically what's happening on the soul level as well. So I would need to split my focus between the cards and the soul aspect. I choose to purely work on the soul level with the psychic readings with those energies. What's deep in the client's soul connection? I don't split my focus between two different modalities at the same time. Tarot cards and soul psychic soul readings are two different modalities. And some people combine the two, but it takes longer to do. And I don't rely just on tarot cards. I rely on my organic ability to do soul readings. When I connect on a deeper level with someone's soul to give them a reading. And there's nothing wrong with doing tarot card readings or just a psychic soul connection reading. They're both great tools, but I don't rely on just one tool. I use everything in my toolkit for readings, just not all at once. So I just prefer the energetic psychic soul readings and galactic soul readings, just based on my pure ability to do those readings. And I consider myself to be good at what I do, um, and I don't need tarot card readings to validate something or to find deeper meanings. I can do that on my own with my abilities. I love tarot. I do. And I work with it in private. I just don't utilize it in sessions with clients. Some people do. Some people don't. I just feel more comfortable with my own organic abilities to do readings for folks. 
So that's kind of the difference between tarot and the soul psychic readings. Both are great tools. I just prefer my organic ability to do the readings for clients or friends or family members. And I've gone beyond Reiki healing and the energy healing things that I do. So it's not just finding where blockages are in the body that are just the Reiki. I find the blockages, I heal those, but I also work with the extra terrestrials as my healer helpers. And that's beyond Reiki now. So I still do aura cleanses, I still do chakra cleanses, chakra healing, but I also do deeper healings of the body, the mind, the soul, the organs. I go on the quantum level of healing. I go beyond just the body and the emotions. I go on the soul level, the frequency of the soul, and that's quantum healing. That's different from even Reiki. So I just wanted to sort of talk about those things and give a bit of an update on how my abilities are evolving and what I'm learning from these experiences. Thank you so much and namaste.